friends namaste and welcome to our saturday edition of economic words of wisdom arth gyan ganga which we beam on our virat hindustan sangam social media channels and we welcome you to, to today's 18th episode which is the concluding episode in the arth gyan ganga or economic words of wisdom the lecture by dr subramaniam swami as you know we have a sunday show at 8 pm which is the normal words of wisdom and uh, uh, what we call as gyan ganga and saturdays we used to have this special show earlier in the form of legal words of wisdom and then this is the 18th episode and the concluding episode of the economic words of wisdom so dr swami is back with his lecture today i have to thank my co-host professor arvin chaturvedi and ramesh swami for being uh, regularly available and hosting the show with us and also have to thank our technical team led by ashish shetty tejas naval gul from pune gargi rakesh from karnataka ishwar ayer from navi mumbai swami nathan from chennai and vishal mehta from mumbai for their background support to put this program together so with this word it is over to dr subramaniam swami yeah. for his lecture on this concluding lecture as part of our economic words of wisdom arth gyan ganga and for the viewers i wish to inform you that all these lectures of dr swami on this saturday show and also our regular show is available on youtube you can always go there and see virat hindustan sangam channel and you will get all the past lectures because many students many well wishers have been asking we have missed some lectures where can we go and see it it is all available on youtube under the virat hindustan sangam channel you can always access it at your leisure at your time and hear these lectures also thank you over to dr swami yeah thank you jagdish um well i mean uh, all good things must uh, come to an <laughs> uh that doesn't mean that i won't be giving uh discourses or lectures in the future on special topics of economy or why or what is why did uh, demonetization fail or what is gst all about or how will you manage resource uh, revenue if you abolish income tax uh so all these policy specific specific policies which i think are necessary for india's economic growth uh i will uh, uh deal special lectures uh, not on uh, on a fixed day like we have been having so far this set of lectures actually is being become larger than i th originally thought i thought we'll do about 13 14 lectures is now is 18 uh essentially is to uh, make you understand that economics is not common sense i mean it is sense but not common sense yeah, if if you know common sense tells you prices rise demand will fall well in economics i can give you examples where if prices rise demand also rises and uh, so, and i did i gave you the example of the irish potato famine when people potato prices rose and people then stopped buying other things and shifted that money to uh, Uh, to buying potatoes and they bought more potatoes than they previously bought so therefore economics uh, 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 supposing you uh, lower uh, the wages of workers doesn't mean more people will be employed common sense tells you yes more people will be employed but if the uh, wages uh, uh, fall or, uh, or you terminate uh, some uh, temporary laborers etc their purchasing power goes away and therefore the demand for goods will go down and if the demand for goods go down then the profits of companies will go down and so those companies which are working on marginal profits they'll all have to close down and that means creating shortage which will actually raise prices so cutting we and unemployment because if you close if companies close down there'll be unemployment so a cut in wages could mean in the certain circumstances A, a increase in unemployment, which you will tell anybody with the common sense, hey, ye kaise ho sakta hai? You know, people will be uh, doubtful. So, I wanted you to motivate you to that. 
so therefore if you if uh, uh, tejas will uh, upload uh, my uh, what i call as chapter 1 because i am thinking of writing a book also now uh, for people to uh, to learn economics from my elementary books economics is a science of optimization that is we optimization can be both maximization and minimization you might want to maximize profit you might want to maximize your, uh, your satisfaction or utility at the same time you may want to minimize cost as your objective uh, so these are uh, you know so these are all in one word is described as optimization and there is an objective you have uh, you want to maximize your gdp you want to maximize your uh, gdp growth rate you want to minimize the inequality you know these uh, these are things which uh, is part of your objective and your resources are always scarce so the question is amongst the various alternatives that you have how to uh, allocate these resources efficiently so that is all economics is about economic policy is structured by objectives what are the priorities among the objectives which you must achieve first which you must achieve second which you must you can't say i'll achieve all the objectives maybe you can't then a strategy for achieving it and finally how to mobilize resources for it so economic policy when people say economic policy what do you mean you whoever tells you economic policy you tell them what is what is the objective what's your priority what's your strategy what's your research mobilization proposals like that that will be scientific way of dealing with the subject now economic logic is to be distinguished from common sense in the following four ways one i call as relativity there is no such thing as cheap and expensive it is the question of alternative if uh, supposing you are thirsty at that time you are not going to look for cheap water <laughs> or expensive water you need water and within your purchasing power you'll buy it whether it's cheap or thing because you are you are almost dying of thirst similarly cost, costly or not costly is also in terms of alternatives so one thing i say uh, people say uh, desalination of sea water is very expensive expensive compared to what if you are not going to get water there will be riots in the society so therefore uh, the, if the river doesn't have enough water get it from the thing even if it will cost a little more so you can uh, uh, the the question basically is that cheap or costly is compared to the opportunity and that's why these are called opportunity costs then of course you have to socially discount that's something very complicated so when i said okay set up a factory um, and the factory then puts in so much smoke that people all in the area in your labor colony they all die of uh, some disease because of that uh, so that is a social cost there are social benefits also if i start a uh, if i start a, uh, a, a say an apple orchard and my neighbor starts a beehive then the beehive will further the uh, the uh, the apple orchards thing because we be beehives will go and they'll sit on the flowers of the uh, before the apple comes and then they will pollinate it so all these as uh, the nature nature has a very interesting way of interacting and that is what it is then we discuss the theory of comparative advantage a country may be producing two goods which are uh, in uh, dollar terms more expensive than uh, those two items in another place but then we have to look at the relative ratio and the in uh, a trade can take place even between an expensive uh, cost expensive country and a cost efficient uh, uh, country if the uh, ratios of the prices are different so therefore uh, and finally something which i didn't deal with much in my discussion but in um, uh, in economics you don't talk in terms of buying on the basis of average because 
your satisfaction level as you get consume more and more starts going down. So therefore, you will go on buying till you reach a situation where the cost of buying it is uh, translated as the pleasure you get from buying it. And the more you buy, the less additional pleasure you will get. And so the, 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 that balancing has to be done. So uh, the price is equal to marginal cost. That means you'll go on buying as long as the additional cost is less than the price. But when it reaches a situation where the additional cost is equal to price, you stop there. Because after that, the additional cost will be more than the price. Uh, it will be less than the price, and therefore you would not uh, like to uh, have it. Uh, of course, if you are a producer, it will be the opposite thing. Now, so um, in uh, in the uh, the book I'm writing, it's a, basically a comparison between India and China, and that's called comparative economics. Once upon a time, before the USSR collapsed, we used to uh, uh, compare socialist economies government-controlled economies with market models. Now, we, uh, there's no, no, no uh, country in the world today which, uh, except perhaps some tin pot dictatorships like, like uh, uh, North Korea, where the government runs everything like in the, it happened in the Soviet Union and almost did like it happened in India. Now we have alternative market models. So in which you have to make, choose you must decide how much should be in public sector, how much should be in private sector, uh, and which democratic institutions can promote uh, allocation resources. So, of course, by example, we can say democracy and market economy are the best for any country. And if you compare two exactly similar countries, Germany, in 1945, it was cut into two one went to the communists, Russia, and the other came to the Americans and the British. And then uh, East Germany took uh, ad adopted communism and socialism, and West Germany uh, adopted market and democracy. And when the Berlin Wall fell and the two Germanys became one, then people saw that Germany was so, East Germany was so poor. And West Germany was so much further ahead. Earlier on, we never knew because there was so much press censorship. So uh, this is a direct comparison between uh, communism and market economy, or democracy and market economy. Uh, similarly, North Korea, South Korea, what a difference. China before uh, economic reform and after economic reform, what a difference. Even India, Nehru and uh, Narasimha Rao. What a difference. So therefore, this is uh, something which uh, uh, you have to keep in mind. But the uh, one last thing is the choice making by society is not transitive. And I gave an example. If you go back to your notes, you'll see it. If A is preferred to B and by an individual, and the same individual prefers B to C, then it stands to logic that you will prefer A to C. That is called transitivity. A is preferred to B and B is preferred to C. Therefore, A is preferred to C. Somebody else may have uh, B is preferred to C and C is preferred to A. Somebody else may have uh, uh, C is preferred to uh, A and A is preferred to B. So, if you uh, calculate the votes, how many prefer A to B, how many prefer B to C, and so therefore you expect that majority will also prefer uh, um, uh, A to C, but you will find in the example I gave you, A will be preferred to B, 2 to 1, B will be preferred to C, 2 to 1, but 1 to 2, or rather, C will be preferred to A, not A preferred to C, but C will be preferred to A at um, um, uh, 2 to 1. So, uh, social decision making 
is not base is not consistent it is in what we call is in, in technical language intransitive and intransitive is very bad news so there's been a whole lot of literature how we can modify choices of the public so that the choices remain transitive so this is the uh, initial comment why economics is different from common sense then the second part we went is into the question of economic development and we uh, we decided to uh, go by simon kuznets definition because his is the one which lasted uh, earlier on there was all kinds of people who galbraith had uh, failed i mean uh, it became obsolete then there was uh, other people arthur um, uh, arthur uh, something from west indies on uh, then rostov uh, take off theory gone and the only thing that has survived is simon kuznets uh, definition of modern economic growth modern as opposed to ancient because my ancient economic growth was largely based on uh, labor intensive uh, and skills whereas modern economic growth has been based on conversion of capital into machines and into internet and so many other things so what mo uh, um it's a thing is modern economic growth is measured by the growth in gdp it's not here in this uh, in this uh, uh, clearly in this definition but that's the meaning of modern we measure the uh, net production by uh, by gdp and the growth rate in gdp is one aspect of the economic development there is a difference between economic growth and economic development. economic growth is in statistics and that modern economic growth is measured by gdp and it must be accompanied by equity that is uh, the inequality must not uh, must not expand while your growth is taking place then otherwise we will not consider it as as good uh, economic growth and that is measured by a coefficient uh, gini coefficient which i have not introduced a uh, human development index which the un gives uh, whether you have social security safety nets all these things but finally the most important is that productivity uh productivity that uh, needs to uh, be added is called total factor productivity that is rise in capital rise in labor leads to rise in production but the more capital more labor you apply the law of diminishing returns of uh, 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 takes place and therefore uh, the extra growth that takes place becomes smaller and smaller and smaller that is called the law of diminishing returns so we draw a curve with capital on the uh, in the x axis and and uh, uh, labor in the l axis and you get a production function or a production curve it will be said slowly tapering off and flattening out and after some time even declining that is to be avoided and how is it avoided and that is why simon kuznets called it modern economy by new innovations which made the productivity of both labor and capital much more computers how much difference it has made to both labor and capital i mean those who invest money so therefore the total factor productivity which is due to innovations if previously were the shopkeeper in a bookstore was oh, you, physically counting how many books he has left so whether to buy or not to buy a new fresh stock or not now he has got a computer which beeps when it when you when the number of books comes down to 3 or 4 and tells you you have to buy more so all these are what they call the increase the productivity of your work and that is called innovation and roughly united states europe 
when they grew economically, modern economic growth, that is after 1820, due to these modern innovations like railways and then Bessemer steel plant and then electricity and then teleprinters and then jet engines and then fax machines and finally internet. And now there are many other things that are coming, um, hydrogen fuel cells, um, atomic driven uh, machines, you know, uh, nuclear driven machines, etc. So the, the issue then becomes this, that uh, uh, how do you ensure this? That is by research and development. United States spends 5% of its GDP on research. China is now spending 3%. How much is India spending? It was only till recently half a percent. Now it has gone to three quarters of a percent. And uh, most of it is done by uh, government. And the government uh, research departments, you know, it's all bureaucratized. If you write a paper, then the boss uh, his name has to be added <laughs> as a joint author. Uh, so plagiarism, all kinds of things happening. That's why if you go to international journals, these international journals, there'll be very few Indians compared to other nationalities like China, uh, Europe, and America. So we, we have not come away from the British system of education where we encourage people to think on your own. Just uh, you know, memorize what is uh, uh, told to you by the teacher, and reproduce it, and the teacher is also happy when you reproduce it, and it gives you marks. But in the West, they encourage you. If you tell, if I remember once, once uh, my mathematics teacher in a Hindu college, he made a mistake, and I said, "You made a mistake, sir." And he told me, "Meet me after the class." And then he told me, "If you again do like this, then you will not be able to pass any exams." I'm telling you, don't do it again. The same thing happened when Paul Samuelson was teaching a class, and I uh, and he couldn't he couldn't come to the conclusion. I mean, he was drawing all series of equations, but he wasn't getting his answer. So he's looking uh, a bit exasperated at the blackboard. Where have I made a mistake? Then I told him, "You have made a mistake on line number four." He said, "He turned around. Who said that?" And he has this Indian who's come out of the blue in his class, and he's saying it. So he walked up to me and he said, go to the blackboard and show me where I made the mistake and how. And I did that. And my classmates all thought that's the end of me. You know, in fact, one of them even asked me when I went and sat down in my chair, uh, have you got a ticket, uh, <laughs> return ticket to India? So, but he, Samuelson said, come and see me at my office. I went to see his office. He said, you know, what you did for me is that you gave me a new idea. And that's how the joint paper between me and Samuelson came. It took some time to write it. But in the end, it came. It was published. It became the most famous paper in index number theory. And uh, so that, that's the difference in the teaching. If somebody makes a mistake, don't, don't laugh at him. Tell him, no, no, this is the way, but this is the way you should have thought. That's the, that is called teaching. Not just uh, like a parrot saying uh, what the book says, and then these, you, like a parrot, learn it and then repeat it in the exam. No, you cannot. So therefore, you will see our research papers, internationally valued research papers, and all, much less. Of course, our people are going abroad, getting trained and coming back. And they're doing wonderfully. They're now in this vaccine, this Bharat uh, uh, biotech company, there are two, husband and wife who went to Wisconsin, got a degree, came back, and they produced a 100% Swadeshi uh, virus. I mean, um, not virus, 100% Swadeshi vaccine. So, and that has almost zero, uh, uh, you know, connected deaths. Whereas all these fancy uh, AstraZeneca and all that, they're all having problems in different countries. We are having problems because the international drug market is putting such heavy uh, examination uh, rules for us that is taking time. But uh, the peer journals like Lancet, Nature, they have already given a complete clearance. And that is why when the Prime Minister didn't name co-vaccine, I raised the halagullah and uh, 
uh, in the uh, 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 health committee of parliament, and that's how it does. So now, uh, what I'm saying is, if you want to go fast, the way to do it is not by more investment and more labor employment. It can't be done that way because you get diminishing returns. By new ways of doing things, hydrogen fuel cells, then you'll save a lot of money from, uh, from not importing oil from the Middle East. Then linking of rivers. This will mean that surplus rivers, which all the rivers, water going to the ocean, will come. So if Godavari and Krishna are connected to Kaveri, there will be no dispute about Kaveri water. If you connect to Waigai, the whole of South India, Tamil Nadu will be benefited. And uh, desalination of sea water is another innovation. And uh, uh, like that, you know, so many things that today uh, we are in the process of researching. If we research on thorium and convert it into usable uranium in a reactor, oh my God, we have so much, 60% of the world's thorium and uranium is getting exhausted. And we will then dominate the nuclear market in, in the world. So th the focus of our development uh, planning should be that. Of course, there are other aspects which uh, when I start dealing with uh, special topics I bring, everything is a, got a context in economics. People say, oh, if you print money, oh, there will be inflation. I heard this, uh, you know, like a parrot, people go on telling me. Yes, if there is a sh excess of demand in the economy. You print money and give it to people, they'll go and spend it, and therefore there'll be shortage, there'll be inflation. But if there is a surplus, like we have just now in India, and people don't have purchasing power because they all lost their jobs and so on, and they're literally eating out of their savings, which means less investment, then I'm afraid your economy is not going to grow. And that's what is happening. I'm saying let's put money, money in the hands of people. It happened in America in the earlier program. Um, our uh, Ramesh told us how in his own bank account, without asking the American government, that sent his annual, uh, his monthly salary. I mean, the monthly earnings because he runs a company. So that is the way we have to. It's a broad. This macroeconomics is so complicated. The micro is very easy. I go to the market. I want to buy. I got an objective function. I maximize that, and I have a budgetary constraint. I put that in. I get my answer. Mathematically, it's easy to get that answer. So. Uh, but here it's a different issue. The issue is that one thing affects another thing. If I, as I got earlier on told, if I cut wages, purchasing power also comes down. That means demand will come down. <clears throat> if demand comes down, factories will make losses. They will close down. There will be more unemployment. So cutting wages actually increase unemployment under certain circumstances. So therefore, uh, economics is a subject which is multidimensional, and it requires your memory to collate the, all these things, then you can, uh, anybody and everybody, somebody chartered accountant thinks he's an economist. And uh, in fact, they are not. Uh, anyone who's on finance, finance is what? It's all bilateral. I, I, I put money, so much money, I get so much money out of the stock market, or I put so much money in, 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 uh, uh, in bonds, this is what I'll get. These are all bilateral things. Economics is multilateral, multidimensional, and therefore, you know, just being a charter accountant or being a finance expert, you cannot be an economist. And common sense is economics, is not common sense. That's why our Prime Minister makes so many bloomers when he speaks about economics. Fortunately, in the last one year, he has not spoken not much on economics, so there hasn't been a problem. So, uh, whether it's a five trillion or whether it is uh, a plus B whole square, or whether dippling of agricultural product in four years, these are all people who don't know economics and therefore they, they say these things uh, uh, because some uh, civil servant or somebody has said that he, he should say it and have a huge impact. So I'm coming to back to this issue that I have been trying to tell you about economics 
the the mindset that you should have now we have this question which i will deal as a special topic if india has to overtake china what must it do economically now i already said in my earlier lecture that if you can grow at 10% per year for say 10 years now after that doesn't matter if you grow at 8% then you will be able to overtake china in 15 years 10 to 15 years now where um uh, where uh, uh, there is a technical way of saying how do i grow at 10% per year i give you a formula that uh, uh, the growth rate is the rate of investment divided by the capital efficiency and this capital efficiency uh, if I, if i give a number 3 it means for depositing um uh, 3 rupees if it's capital output ratio if i put a capital of 3 rupees then every year for eternity i will get 1 rupee that is 3 that's too high by japanese standard japan had got 1.8 and 1.9 India is running at six and seven. You have to put six, seven, or six, seven rupees in uh, investment before you can generate one rupee every year uh, 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 of income. So uh, that's if inefficient because of corruption, because of you know black money, oh, all kinds of things. So the inefficiency has to go, and if the corruption goes, the inefficient will go. then you can bring it down a country like india can easily bring it down to 3 and if you have 36% of your gdp is saved and invested then 36 divided by 3 is 12 so you get a 12% growth rate and 12% 72 divided by 12 is how much 6 that means every 6 years you will double every 6 years you will double if you are growing at 12% per year prime minister said i will double the gdp to 5 trillion dollars in 5 years and 72 by 4 5 which means 14.4 that's an approximate number if you actually did the mathematical calculation it will be 14.8 14.8% growth rate is not joke so therefore uh, i am saying you will all be equipped not to be you know bamboozled by all this jargon that people put out and you can go in terms of how to do it so i my job will be now to take you forward and take you forward in a way where you can look at a problem and what is the problem with the indian economy i'll tell you why is the indian economy been declining since 2016 or 2017 because some certain wrong things that were done which made investment give you a lower rate of return and uh, 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 to correct that you must know how to correct get it corrected and therefore and how to get out of this uh, this corona thing once it uh, abates substantially which is bound to be i mean I, by nature of things i don't think it's like the uh, flu epidemic people never they thought that it will never go and it went away after about after uh, it took a long time in those days it took uh, 10 years for it to go but now our uh, modern medicines are uh, more modern science is much more advanced so i think the total effect of corona will be over in 3 years and uh, and uh, and you know our society can then start recovery then we have to do a bit of a catch up and uh, don't believe all like and numbers that uh, IMF and World Bank put out because they only put out what the government gives them so chinese data have to be reworked which is what i did and i earned my reputation when i published my book on india china comparisons with the university of chicago press it became a best seller of course it was highly recommended by kuznets uh, so automatically people were not critical uh but otherwise you know a new young professor comes and he writes a book everybody will tear it tear it apart but because it's a background of uh, school nets my thing got a huge uh, rave review and it was a best seller and it set the trend 
in uh, in uh, india china comparison but now we have lost a lot of ground a lot of ground after upa and now seven years of modi we have fallen behind china but we can catch up we can catch up and uh, in my opinion we should not take more than 10 years uh, to catch up because the gap is not that much and the gdp of china in ppp terms is about 2.4 times india and that can be covered in in about 10 to 12 years uh, with reasonable growth rate but and so i think that has to be our target economically we must catch up with china and overtake it and we are the only country which can challenge the united states because we have that democratic society which will enable if properly guided by the political leadership for innovations encourage people to re- do research increase your research thing from less than 1% increase it to 6% rr research and development and it will give you several times that much in return by uh, by new technology so um uh, these prescriptions is something i will deal with and I, and any time a new uh, proposal comes from the government you want to know how is it going to happen how, how it's going to go i i'll have a special lecture on it but as of now today uh, i have basically taught you something called microeconomics which is common sense in a sense it's basically common sense except i articulated you maximize your utility subject your best your your you know budget constraints and so on and you have a demand curve and if you want to do it geographically you got an indifference curve all that uh but the tough for economics is macroeconomics where you don't know what will happen if i do something here something else will happen there and therefore you must know all this and uh, once you know this then you can like a good uh, driver you can drive the economy in the direction you want so it's a great subject it's become now a science there are nobel prizes for it whether is being given fairly or not is another question but uh, the greats have got it uh, simon kuznets got it then samuelson got it kenneth arrow got it robert solo got it and all these these are people who have really contributed to the mathematicalization of and quantification of economic ideas otherwise previously it was all as uh, essays like uh, galbraith's books if you read galbraith's book so shakespeare and excel the we i call them shakespearean economics uh, so all the ancient adam smith and marshall and all 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 essays uh, it, like this tending like this may, you know likely to this is the language that you use here in mathematics you know, is are precise this much 5% 10% 7 and 1/2% that way so mathematics has translated transformed economics into a science and uh, and is now recognized as a science by the nobel committee and i think therefore uh, uh from time to time i will be dealing with this uh economic subject as soon as something comes up and maybe after writing my uh, my book new book that's coming on india china economics comparisons i may uh, may hold a special session and it details industry by industry uh, sector by sector how india can do better than china what's our potential have we got more land than china is our land more productive than china uh, you know uh, and can we what are the innovations we need i'll give the specific and who should be given that so it will be a specifically oriented one but because of this background that you have got which you keep should keep brushing uh, that background you will be able to understand what is to be done as a uh, in the eco- economy of india so i uh, thank you all of you you have been very co- helpful by send, uh, sending me comments and so on and of course i have to thank the uh, gyan ganga uh, maestros sitting here uh, jagdish arvin uh, our ramesh and all these young brilliant uh, it types who are 
a terror to all the fake ID people. <laughs> uh, so to have this program gone. So if there are any questions, uh, thoughts, uh, suggestions, Jagdish, you can, we can, all our colleagues can uh, intervene and tell us. We got still about 15 minutes to go. Yes, Arvind, please go ahead. Uh, not so many questions, Dr. Swami. In fact, uh, you have been uh, covering the issues uh, in such a manner that uh, I have been saying this earlier and uh, maybe I can repeat at the cost of repetition that you have made a very complex things look simpler. And uh, looking, at our, looking at the profile of our viewers, uh, many of them may not have a formal uh, uh, training in mathematics. But you have made it so simple that the concept has gone home. And, and that, that is the contribution, uh, is, is significant contribution you have made. And you rightly said it is the mathematics which has transformed the economics into uh, science. And uh, uh, whether we have a concept of uh, 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 Guinea index or you mentioned about uh, the, the disparity, inequality, Thiel index is there. I had used in my thesis uh, Borgignon's index. And then you have a concept of convergence and divergence uh, between countries or states or uh, districts. I mean, there are so many mathematical concepts which have now come in in the last 30, 40 years, uh, which have really made it a science. And it has become that that's why uh, the Nobel Prize is also uh, given the science. And uh, Though today is supposed to be a concluding session uh, and you have promised it is not really a concluding session in the sense yeah. that the specific yeah. issues you will continue to deal with. And I have uh, some suggestions like uh, uh, there are many people who would be interested in uh, how the Reserve Bank works or how the banking system no. works. Maybe we can also invite some finance expert uh, yes. uh, uh, who can also deal with such subjects. And yeah. from the time to time, so this is a promise to the viewers that Dr. Yeah. Swami uh, will be available. And uh, as and when a particular economic issues hmm. which touches the people or the country yeah. requires that to be discussed and a solution to be provided, Dr. Swami is always available. Uh, this yeah. is just an uh, uh, observation and comment, not really a question. Fine. Thanks very much. Jagdish? No, a lot of viewers are a little sad that uh, our regular <laughs> session is going to end. So they have said, uh, please keep us uh, updated or educated and take us some of the uh -huh. topics. So as you have already mentioned, you will uh -huh. be spe uh, speaking on special topics. And uh -huh. our Sunday program anyway will continue. And where yeah, are that's... important issues, we will be taking up in our Sunday session. But as you have mentioned, yeah, on the abolition of income tax and alternative revenues, whether it is demonetization or GST, they could be separate sessions. Some interesting yeah. comments was India from 1950 to 1991 compared to India after 1991. Yeah, These yeah, are some yeah. of the suggestions which our viewers would like to uh, and our students especially yeah. would like you to discuss. So these are right. some of the suggestions which we have been right. uh, receiving from our viewers, but most of them have expressed that they are really enlightened to have such sessions with you. And they look forward uh, to many more such special sessions also in the future. So this yeah. is generally my views on based on feedback from our viewers across the globe. So now okay. I could request Arvind Chaturvedi to conclude, yeah, but Swami, I'll just make one more uh, uh, comment. Uh, after uh, your guru uh, Simon Kuznets gave the world the concept of GDP, gross domestic product, uh, there have been many uh, comments on the validity and reliability of the GDP. And many economists have suggested that there should be uh, some kind of improvement in this measurement of GDP. Sure more variables should be added. Can you just uh, highlight uh, this particular aspect? You see, the uh, question that uh, the, the core criticism of GDP is it doesn't take into account the distribution of, uh, of income. It 
tells you you sell this and you get this much this is the total gross gross national income uh, you know gross national product is is essentially in in, in dollar terms uh, so um, the, that is not a, you know that is not a substitute for gdp gdp i want to know how much net production we have made right why do i say net because i produce steel <clears throat> and I then use it to produce a car i use it to produce a cycle so i can't count cycle basket um, a car and steel from a factory all three that will be a double counting triple counting triple counting in fact right, right so therefore i have to carefully see and that's why this input output matrix was brought in so that exactly we can separate out the final product after subtracting all that was taken away for inputs the net final product in what is gdp that measures the strength of, of the economy and uh, then you want to know more you want to know yeah. how the income distribution is you want to know whether the quality of life whether yeah. uh, how many what percentage get uh, drinking water uh, yeah. how much have uh, drain, you know sewage, sewage proper sewage uh, uh, how many have pakka houses now these are all these welfare concept people they uh, they don't like this mathematicalization that has gone on so they try to pull you down by saying these are the important income distribution okay income distribution when we start saying okay lorentz curve gini coefficient then no no, no no not that way uh, you know how many poor people how many are starving you know, so you will be careful careful when people say this we need gdp and then in addition now that's why in my definition i said if you see in the definition increasing equity measured by gdp hdi means uh, human development in, uh, index, yeah social security safety net so it's a component of economic development but it's right. not economic growth right you see so uh, and supposing now in china the inequality is much more than india people are shocked how can it be it's a communist country no in china the urban the sector grew much faster than the rural sector yes so the the distance between the income of the urban people and the rural people became large right. within agriculture and uh, within the rural sector there was no increase in inequality within the uh, uh, urban sector there was no increase in inequality but between the urban sector and uh, so you know in the calculation when i do i separate the two the the, uh, the uh, uh, inequality in the urban sector inequality in the rural sector and the intersectoral inequality right. all three have to be taken into account in fact one of my papers uh, i have dealt with it Uh, which is the American Economic Review had uh, published it, where I demolished the uh, work of the two Reserve Bank economists called Butt and somebody else, and they were all very angry with me. But uh, what can I do? They <laughs> they produce hocus pocus. So uh, we have to be very very careful not to be dragged by these ideologue types into uh, you know uh, 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 taking you away from the quantification of economics. Hmm. they don't like quantity galbet used to tell me what is this? this is all factory what you are doing with simon kuznets is just putting you know, like a factory you producing data 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 <laughs> so uh, i mean he, he he was in the department and he had been an ambassador so he thought all indians will do like that but i had a special status because i broke the record in the clearing the phd general examination so soon i became assistant professor then for phd there is three professors one junior which used to be me then two seniors uh, and galbet sometimes used to come in his economic job. but he was all the time emphasizing oh, you are with kuznets he is just making you work like a factory worker churning churning data this is not economics economics is this beautiful concept of you know the <laughs> living and this and that and how pleasure you get all so there there has been that phase but now of course uh, uh, generally economics is all mathematical 
So I, I won't get derailed by it, but I will certainly delay, deal with what you said about inequality, uh, uh, human development index, uh, uh, you know, the life, uh, the, uh, the level of living, all these things which the UN produces a lot of data on. I'll deal with right. it as a separate issue. Yeah. Even Dr. Swami on HDI, people are saying it covers only health, education, and income. It should that's cover right. many other things like freedom of expression yeah. and you know. Yeah, yeah, that's right. right. They will always right. be some kind of comment yeah, on these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, so if uh, then soon, uh, they, but they will not agree that I, when I'm comparing India and China, I should include the right of democracy, right of freedom of speech. That also right. should be quantified as well from between 1 to 10, we'll yeah. overtake China in that way. Absolutely. So leftists left say, no, 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 what is democracy got to do with it? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. In fact, uh, we started this uh, the show on uh, 6th of uh, March. And in the last 18 weeks, uh, you have covered so much. And uh, uh, in, I mean, uh, we, economics per se, and anything which touches economics. Uh, or, or uh, development of the country that those kind of issues you have covered and uh, those issues which are remaining uh, Jagdish has mentioned some of them you have mentioned some of them we will be certainly covering them if not on Saturday maybe on a Sunday special we have every week yeah. words of wisdom uh, Gyan Ganga yeah, program or, 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 or any day of the week that's not a problem uh, uh, yeah 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 uh, 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 as and when uh, the topic comes up uh, we'll take it that take that up and uh, yes. uh, I'm sure our viewers will be satisfied largely with the kind of teaching that you have done. I mean, in fact, uh, uh, people have seen only the uh, you as an author writing books and all that. But you yes. as a lecturer, people have only heard that you were at Harvard. But now people have seen uh, you have shared written material pages after pages in every episode. You have given them formulas and all that and how to interpret those formulas. Great, great contribution, Dr. Swami. Thank you very much. And uh, 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 tomorrow is Sunday. We have the regular issue of uh, Words of Wisdom, Gyan Ganga. Tomorrow we have a very special uh, episode. Tomorrow we are going to discuss the politics in Bengal, the situation ah. in Bengal. And uh, we have a very important uh, guest speaker tomorrow along with Dr. Swami. Uh, that is Mr. Tathagata Roy. Tathagata Roy has been a governor. He is a, he has been a BJP. In, uh, he is a leader in uh, Bengal. And he has a very outspoken uh, personality. He talks about political issues, uh, frankly. And uh, therefore, uh, tomorrow we'll discuss this situation at 8 p.m. Uh, Indian Standard Time with Dr. Swami and Mr. Tathagata Roy. Do join us. Thank you, Jagdish Ji. Thank you, Ramesh Swami. Thank you, Ashish Shetty. Uh, Ishwar Ayer, Gadgi Rakesh, Swaminathan, Tejas, and Vishal Mehta. This team has done wonders. So for 18 episodes uh, of Earth Gyan Ganga, thank you, the technical team. Thank you very much. It has not, uh, it, it, it would not have been possible without your help. Thank you. Uh, so thank we'll you. meet tomorrow again, 8 o'clock, to discuss yes. the situation in Bengal. Dr. Swami yes. and Tathagatraya. Till then, Namaskar, Jai Hind. Jai Hind. <laughs>